If Nigeria was an example of, of a country where there was poverty and internal warfare and enormous pollution over oil, Iraq to me was a place where I would be able to perhaps explore this question of, do we go to war over oil? And it seems a very obvious question that's easy to answer. And so in 2003, I went to Kuwait, and I was one of these crazy journalists who, in March of 2003, went to the Hertz office in Kuwait City and rented an SUV. And then on March 18th, when the US Army advanced into Iraq, drove my SUV over the border. Um, my mother would not have approved if she had known. <laughs> and I then hooked up with the Marine Battalion that went to Baghdad, and it arrived in Baghdad, and it was the battalion, actually, as luck would have it for me as a correspondent, that took down the statue of Saddam Hussein. And it was actually, of course, a very highly photographed moment, but on the scene, it was actually a very confusing time. There were Iraqis who were celebrating, but there was also one who was attacked by the crowd because somebody said he's a spy for Saddam, and he had to be saved by a Marine. And then I went on the next day to the Ministry of Oil. Now, the Ministry of Oil was just a few miles away. Baghdad at the time, as you'll remember, was chaotic. There was looting going on, there was violence. It was dangerous just to go out in a car to anywhere, as opposed to just staying where you were in your apartment or your hotel. And I went to the ministry, and it was surrounded by American troops. It was safe. Nothing else in Baghdad was safe. And I stood outside of the security perimeter that the American troops had set up, and there were Iraqis there who worked in the ministry who wanted to get inside. And they were just basically tugging on my sleeve, saying, you see, the ministry is surrounded, the ministry is safe, the Americans have the Ministry of Oil, but they're protecting nothing else. The National Museum, which I had driven by, was being looted at the time. And this is one of the kind of, it was a dramatic image that seemed to tell us and tell me everything I needed to know about oil. But this is one of the problems, I think, of, of invisibility of oil, is that sometimes we don't know what to see or what to look at, so we see only one or certain things without the totality. And I went across the river to the Dora oil refinery, which is the largest oil refinery in Baghdad, actually the only oil refinery in Baghdad. It was not protected. And it was protected finally after a few days when some American troops arrived. And it was saved from the looters only because the kind of rascalish, Baathist refinery director turned out to love his refinery more than he loved Saddam. And he organized his workers as a defense force. And when I went there, it was a remarkable institution because it had been built 50 years ago. If you want to know about America's kind of intricate and long-standing relations with Iraq and its oil, you just need to go to the Dora refinery. It was built about 50 years ago by American and British companies. Uh, in the conference room in the administration building, there are oil portraits of all the refinery directors, and the first 10 refinery directors were American or British. The time clock that workers at the Dora refinery still punch into is an IBM time clock which doesn't only tell you about the U.S.-Iraqi relationship, but also kind of the workmanship of IBM machinery back then. <laughs> the director of the refinery was working with an 82nd Airborne captain named Tom Huff, who was assigned to help protect this refinery. And it was so chaotic that Tom Huff, an 82nd Airborne captain, was just having to help run the refinery, figure out how to get supplies there, how to keep the looters at bay, et cetera. And almost every day when I was there, he would look at me at some point, and he would say, you know, I don't... I don't know what the Bush or the American government policy is because nobody has told me what I'm supposed to be doing here. All I know is that I'm running a refinery, but I was trained as an airborne officer to jump out of planes and kill people. And, and he was proud of this because that is what airborne um, rangers are, 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 are trained to do, but he was having to improvise quite a bit. And the fact that this refinery actually wasn't defended terribly well and there wasn't a lot of attention to it showed me the complexity that sometimes, although a war in this case, the invasion of 2003, certainly oil was central. That the fact that not every facility, and in fact, a lot of the facilities were not defended, indicated to me that maybe it wasn't the absolutely only thing. Because in 1990, when we had the Persian Gulf War, oil was absolutely the only thing, and the Kuwait's oil facilities, which Saddam had left in flames, were within 100 days producing oil once again. In the case of Iraq, absolute chaos. And so it made me realize that the way to ask the question isn't whether a war is about oil, but how is it about oil?